Hello and welcome to the new section of the course. This course is designed to be as terse as possible. No water, avoid empty verbosity, only code and its practical application. Sources you can find in the description for this video. Let's get started. From this course, you will learn how to install Magento 2 version 2.4.6 on a local machine with the Debian 12 operating system. First of all, we need to set up server environment. For a visual presentation, I will use VirtualBox with Debian OS. I will use a virtual server because I have a Windows operating system and Magento requires a Linux build. VirtualBox helps run multiple operating systems on a single computer, Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. So, go to the official website of the application and download VirtualBox 7. Download binaries and save to your machine. In my case, I will use a package for Windows. Download a necessary package of the virtual machine according to your operating system. Open file after the download has finished successfully. A short description of the installation process. Run the installer and click Next. Depending on your configuration, you may see warnings about unsigned drivers or similar. Click Yes for these warnings, as otherwise, VirtualBox might not function correctly after installation. Now click Finish, and then a new button for creating a new virtual machine. To configure a machine, set the following data, descriptive name and destination folder, then select ISO image, path to the ISO file that we will use to install an OS. For this tutorial, I'm using the Debian OS, so I go to the official website of the operating system and download the file. Operating system installation file in ISO format. It is selected automatically for your system. Then in a virtual box, specify the paths to this newly downloaded ISO image. After that, check the skip unattended installation option and click next. Now change amount of RAM and virtual CPU count. I recommend set RAM to 8 GB minimum and CPU to at least 2 cores for Magento 2 to work normally. And click next. Choose Create a Virtual Hard Disk Now and set disk size in gigabytes. Click Next and then Finish, and you can immediately change the settings for video memory. Okay, now you can start the machine. At this step, the virtual machine will start the process of installing the Debian operating system from the ISO file we specified earlier. When the virtual machine starts, select Graphical Install and press Enter. Choose your preferred language, then select your location and the appropriate keyboard layout and click Continue. Wait until installer detecting hardware to find installation media and loading additional components. During the installation process, the Debian installer will attempt to automatically configure the IP address by obtaining it from an existing DHCP server in your network. Enter a host name for your Debian system and then a domain name, but you can leave this field blank. In the next step, set a strong and unique password for the root user account and click Continue. Next step, create new user account. Enter a full name, username and set passwords. Select your time zone and click Continue. At this step, select this to partition. Choose your preferred partitioning scheme and confirm writing partition changes to disk. After that, a Debian 12 base installation will begin. Watch the download install setup of the base system. The installer will prompt you to scan for additional media. Therefore, simply choose the No option to proceed to the next step. Select a nearby Debian archive mirror to configure package manager. Usually, default value is a good choice. Here I choose No and default values for collections of software. To customize the system according to your specific requirements, you have the option to install one or more predefined collections of software. Now the installer will start installing the selected software. Please wait. Choose Yes and select the drive on which you want to install the bootloader. After the installation process is complete, your system will be rebooted.
Upon reboot, you will be presented with a login prompt where you can enter the username and password you created during the installation. Congratulations, you have successfully installed Debian 12. At first login, you will be greeted with the GNOME initial setup. Select the necessary settings. Now you can see all the programs that were installed by default. Open settings and adjust the system to your needs. In this step, I will change the value of resolution for displays. And I will set the value under my monitor. Also, now I will configure the browser. The first time you start the default browser, Firefox, you will be asked to make initial settings. In this course, I will use this particular browser as well as the system's default terminal. So, I open these tools and the reference materials for this course. You will find links to them in the description for this lesson. For your convenience, I have prepared all the necessary commands and placed them in HTML files. Open terminal and enter commands step by step. Just copy the command from the additional material for the lesson and paste it into the terminal. Fine. Now I'll move on to installing Visual Studio Code. Why Visual Studio Code? Because it's free and will suit our future Magento installation needs. You can use an IDE you are used to and know better. Good. I go to the official site and download the .deb package. After download is complete, I copy the file name to use it later in a command in a terminal. So I open a terminal and enter the commands one by one as shown in the supplementary materials. Once you have installed VS Code, I recommend that you familiarize yourself with the program's documentation. If you are not familiar with it, now I will open the installed program and make some initial settings. You adjust Visual Studio Code to your preferences. Start working with the program from the first step. Customize your editor learn the basics, and start coding. All this is described on the welcome screen. Get started with VS Code. Go through each section one by one. For example, here I show how to install extension, namely Python language support. There are a large number of available and useful tools and extensions in the program. Further, during the course, I will show the minimum skills that will allow you to work normally with the Magento Store and its installation. But fine-tuning and in-depth familiarization with the instrument is beyond the scope of this course. So, let's move on. In the next section of this course, I will configure the server environment. For this, I will use Docker, a useful tool that allows to quickly and efficiently configure the system for all the main requirements to run Magento open source. So, to begin with, we will install Docker. Open the additional materials and use the commands in the terminal one by one. In the first step, I will set up Docker's apt repository. And in the next step, I will install the latest Docker packages. So, why Docker? Developing with Docker simplifies the process of configuring the server environment. Instead of installing each element separately, for example, PHP, database, etc., you can use a single image and the corresponding containers. Later in the course, you will see how much easier it becomes to install Magento using Docker. Please note that this command uses all the main and necessary components of Docker, namely Docker CLI and Docker Compose. Accordingly, other components will not need to be installed separately.
Now it's time to check if everything is installed correctly. Run the test image, if you see the following message, so everything is installed well. Next you need to make certain settings for Docker Engine. Manage Docker as a non-root user. Configure Docker to start on boot. Then set permissions to the Docker daemon socket. Let's look at installing Magento using a Docker project. There are a large number of projects and in this example we will focus on the project from Mark Schust. For example and for testing purposes, I will set up Magento with the automated online setup script. First, create a directory for your Magento project. Then, navigate to this folder in the terminal. From the project folder, run a command of an automated setup in a terminal. If necessary, change the hostname and version of Magento you want to install. I am installing Magento version 2.4.6 with P4 security patch. As you can see in the terminal, the following elements are installing. Mail catcher, simple SMTP server, DB, MySQL database, APP, project files and modules, open search, software for search, analytics, observability and other, RabbitMQ, messaging and streaming broker, PHP FPM, PHP server, and Redis, a database, cache, and message broker. Instead of installing all of these items separately, with Docker we can set up a server environment with just a few commands in the terminal. As a result, the Magento installation process becomes much faster. That's all. Magento is successfully installed on a local server. Now you can open your site in a browser. As the certificate is self-signed, browser will generally ask you whether you want to accept the certificate. Let's check if the site opens or if the default pages can open. Also, check an admin page of your Magento store. Everything seems to be working fine. Let's move on. If you want to install sample data, then use the following commands in a terminal. Only two commands are enough for this. We check the front end and back end pages again. As you can see, the demo data has been installed successfully. Great! Now let's see how our Magento project looks in Visual Studio Code in Docker. First, you need to install the Docker extension in VS Code. Open the extension tab and find the appropriate extension. Install it. After installation, the welcome page will open and we are immediately recommended to specify a workspace folder. Specify the folder of our Magento project. After that, you will see all available Docker containers and project images.
For example, let's open the PHPMI admin container, responsible for working with the database. You can find the authorization data for a database in file db.nv in an env folder. So, we have access to the database. Now let's check access to the administrative panel of a site. You can find the authorization data for admin in magento.env file in an env folder. When logging into Magento backend for the first time, you will be shown a message. You need to configure two-factor authorization. Also, it is said that an email was sent to you with further instructions. Let's see what tool we have installed to manage mail. Open the compose.yml file, which contains basic information about the components. In this example, the component mail catcher is responsible for mail. Let's open this container in a browser. We can see that the component has indeed catched the letter. Let's open it and try to configure two-factor authorization. A message is displayed that two-factor authorization providers have been successfully configured. But when I try to enter the code, it shows me the error, invalid code. So let me show you how to disable two-factor authentication 2FA module in Magento 2.4.6 for a local development environment and for testing purposes. To do this run below commands in terminal, After that, we check and you should not have any problems with entering the site's admin panel. Good, and at the end of the lesson, there is one more important thing. When you restart your computer, you will see that the Magento site does not open and you will see that the Docker containers are not running. You need to run them individually or all together. Once you have all the Docker containers running, your site should work fine. Thank you for your attention. See you at the next lessons. Bye.